Hey guys, Kingpin here, and welcome to the very first episode of Keeper Training, our very new tutorial series here on the channel. We recently ran a community poll asking if you guys would want to see additional types of content. Tutorials were on there and won by a landslide, beating out things like top fives too, which I thought sure would win. That being said, today we're going to go over how to make a starter enclosure and then upgrade it with a little bit of additional features later on. This game is very complicated, and starting out's not easy, so I'm happy to help some of you guys who have asked. The first thing that you're going to want to do, whenever you start any type of zoo in this game, look in the top left. You're going to see that notification that says you need five things. You're going to need a keeper hut, a trade center, a staff room, a quarantine, and a vet surgery. So find a place to place all of them. The first thing that we're going to do is go onto the path that we get at the start of the game, and simply just branch off of it, going to a different area. All of these buildings that we listed have negative impacts on guests, so you want to keep them a little bit of a ways away from the path that the guests are going to be using. Pathing in its own sense is a little bit of a difficult concept, so I'll likely make a separate keeper training for that later on if you guys are interested. Pathing is, with all honesty, probably the hardest part of the game to get down. On Xbox, if you use the bumpers, I'm assuming it's the same on PlayStation, you can access the staff-only path from the menu. From there, just go back to that notifications tab and select every single building that the game says you need. Remember, there's five of them total. If you go to your heat maps, one of the important options is negative impact on guest. And as you can see, we placed a few of these buildings a little bit too close to the path. We're not going to fix that in this video since it's mainly focused on how to build your first exhibit, but just know, if you wanted to do that, you can build a little bit further away. After all of your buildings are placed and you're happy with the locations of them, enter the animal market from the menu. From here, simply pick what animal you think would be best with. You can do anything you want in sandbox mode, but if you're in a franchise zoo, there are certain animals I would recommend. You want something that can breed often so you can start racking up conservation credits, but it's also incredibly easy to take care of. If you're looking for a recommendation now, try starting out with the greater flamingo or any species of lemur. They're really easy and simple to take care of, and they'll start your zoo off well. In this tutorial, however, we're going to be going with the king of the jungle, the lion itself. We're going to get a male and a female. Whenever you're starting off, no matter what animal it is, always get a male or female. That way they can breed. But as you can see here, if you open your animal storage, we now have the two lines that we purchased. Any animal that you purchase will always go to your trade storage, so make sure you remember where it is. When starting off making your first exhibit, figure out one, where you want it to go, and two, make a path. It doesn't have to be super complicated. This is going to be the most basic exhibit you can possibly have. But before you do that, make sure you hire some staff. On sandbox mode, just hire one of each. But on a franchise zoo, only hire a caretaker, a keeper, and a vet for now. A mechanic too if you want to get some early research done. After this, we're ready to start building, so let's get to it. The very first step one should always take, whether you're a veteran of this game or you're playing for the first time, is recognize what animal you're building for and know exactly what they need. You do this by utilizing the Zoopedia. You find it in the menus, and all of the animals are in complete alphabetical order, although you have to remember the specific name of the animals. For example, they're not just called lions in this game, they're called West Africa lions. So there's going to begin with a W, not an L. The reason that we're in this screen in the first place and we're using the Zoopedia is that this is the tool that tells you exactly what your exhibits need to be at a bare minimum. For example, if you look at land requirement, the West African lion, for just one of them, not the two that we have, needs 705 square meters of space in its area. It needs zero water, zero climbing space, and zero deep water. This isn't saying it doesn't need to drink, we'll talk about that later, but just know for now, this is for one lion, and it needs 705 square meters of space. At the bottom, you're also going to find temperature requirement and the type of barrier that you're going to need. Some animals can jump really high. Right above all of that relevant information, you can also change the amount of animals that it's calculating for. For example, one of our lions needed 705 square meters, but we have two. And what if one of those lions has a baby? So you have to account for numerous things. There's ways to stop animals from breeding, so you can calculate the distance exactly of what you'd want, depending on how many animals you plan to have. If you don't calculate their breeding, you might make an exhibit way too big or too small. 
Now that we know exactly what the animals are going to need for their exhibit, we also have to take into account what the people are going to need for their exhibit, and there's two types of people we have to prepare this exhibit for. The keepers and staff, and the guests. The guests are more important, since they're the ones who end up paying the salaries of the keepers, and without them, the zoo wouldn't be running in the first place. What the guests are going to need are good areas to view the animals from, and what the staff is going to need is an area to access the exhibit from. The first thing that I always like to figure out is exhibit access for the staff, since without the staff, the animals aren't going to be very happy. So try to figure out where you want your barricade to go. To make a functional exhibit gate, go to the Barriers tab in the menu, it's the furthest on the right, and then hit the bumper on the right one time. This will take you to the Barriers tab, and there's a variety of different options. There's short ones, there's tall ones, there's tunnels, there's gates, there's glass, there's wood, and there's brick. Holding X will allow you to make this, or you can make it as short as you want. But remember what the requirement was for our West Africa Lions. It has to be at least 10 feet tall. I think it was 9.75 to be exact. In meters, which I have the game set to right now, that would be about 3. Once you get the height to exactly where you want it, don't worry about the viewing yet. We're going to do that next. But then, just try to get the exhibit the exact shape you want. Try to remember the requirements that your lions need. For example, our one West African lion needed 705 square meters, and with two, which we have right now, it needed about 800. It's going to come easier once you get a grasp of the game and make a few exhibits, it'll more come naturally. But to starting out, you might just have to eyeball it and use some trial and error. But first, start off by making just a pretty basic square. We'll work on complicated shapes later. Right now we're just trying to figure out how to get these animals to 100% happiness. While making your basic shape, you'll notice that there's a lot of options on the side near the tabs. You have straight or curved, that's pretty self-explanatory. Do you want hard right angles or do you want to make a more circular exhibit? To each his own. Neither is right or wrong, and you can use a mixture of both. There's also climb proof, which if you remember we're going to need for these lions. You can add windows, you can add one-way glass, you can change the material. These are very modular, but for now, just try and make your basic shape. We'll add the rest now. Typically holding the A button will let you go into multi-select mode so you can duplicate plants, rocks, or whatever. But if you're under the Barriers tab and you hold A, you can actually change numerous barriers at once just by highlighting them. Then you can make them all climb-proof at once, we could change the height of these four specifically, but what we want to do now is add windows so the guests can see them. We're also going to want to make them climb-proof so that way we can check our two objectives off already. We have guest viewing, and we have an area where the lions can't escape from, which in this case is the entire exhibit. So like I said, go to the Barriers tab, hold the A button down, and go over every single piece of the barrier, and then select Climbable, and switch it to Non-Climbable. If you wanted to make all of these windows, go ahead, but also make sure the non-climbable pads are on the interior of this, not the exterior, because that won't do anything. Next, we have to actually get the lions into the exhibit, so go to the Trade Center, it's the one that has this door that sort of looks like a bank vault, and select both of them. Hit Add to the Zoo, and select them into the exhibit. You can speed up the time if you need to by holding X and hitting up on the D-pad a couple times, but you don't necessarily have to. If you can't put the lions or whatever animal you're using into your exhibit yet, that means it's incomplete. It either doesn't have a door, or the fence is incomplete somewhere. So just make sure you did it right. Double check. Eventually, the keepers or the vet is going to throw a box and whatever animal you have in will come into your exhibit finally. The first thing that you should do is pause the time, just in case they can escape. In this exhibit, I highly doubt they can get out of here, but it doesn't hurt to check. Also, what you need to do is look at the animal's needs. So when we click on our West Africa lions right here, as you can see, they have zero enrichment, zero hard shelter, and they don't like the terrain. We're going to finish that. Let's work on hard shelter first, since that's easy. If you downloaded the console edition of the game, I believe you have a few preset blueprints. Hard shelter doesn't necessarily have to be a structure. We'll talk about more advanced hard shelter tips later. But for now, just pick something with a roof over their head. All hard shelter has to do is be able to provide them a place where they can seek shelter from the rain, if they don't want to deal with people right now, somewhere they can hide if it's too sunny out, if it's too cold, just somewhere where they can get away and be themselves. After you place your hard shelter, go back to one of the two lions that we've picked, click on him, and you'll see it's 100%. If it's only 50%, that means the shelter isn't near big enough for both of the lions, so you'll have to try again, or just add to it. You can do either. 
Next we're going to worry about the terrain, and as you can see here, they have too much long grass and not enough rock. So the easiest thing to do that is to replace the long grass we already have with rock. Again, we're not trying to make this exhibit look like eye candy, we're just trying to make the lions have 100% happiness. This is about as basic as an exhibit can possibly get. So, if you think you've passed this stage, wait until the second or third exhibit, and maybe you'll learn something there. But, let's continue. Next we need to worry about enrichment, and plant coverage too. For enrichment, click on it, you can filter out whatever they need, and place it down. There's two types of enrichment, toy or food, but if you place too many of the same toy, you'll see that its usefulness wears. The first couple might give you 75, but after that they only give you one. So try and mix up what toys they like. Think about when you were a kid, or if you still are. You wouldn't want to play with the exact same toy all day. You have to have a hundred different things. So mix up what toys they have, and what food items that you give them. Once both of those meters are maxed out, you see we need 10 out of 10 on the top, and then 115 out of 115 on the bottom, then you're good and we can work on plants. The last thing that you're going to need to do for enrichment is add a food tray. This does one of two things. For one, it can actually feed the animals when they don't want to use their enrichment. But the second thing that it does is it allows the keepers to interact with the animals. Most carnivores are going to require that you have a food tray like this, and most herbivores are going to need a trough. But if you use this water spool thing instead of the actual water trough, the animals can get it on their own to take some stress off of the keepers. It doesn't have to be filled. The next thing that we're going to want to do is access plants and put them in the exhibit. Lions aren't a very good example of this because as you can see by their coverage meter on the top right, they don't like a whole lot of plants, but they like a wide variety of them. You can see exactly what they like from the Zoopedia or accessing it their own menu. If you'd fast travel to the plant menu using the animal's UI, that means it automatically filters out what plants it doesn't like. So just add a few plants until they're completely happy with it. I don't think lions necessarily need any plants, but they don't want it a whole lot. But as you can see, other than their last meal quality, which since this is sandbox mode, we can up the quality of their food easily. You can either do that from the menu or by clicking the gate. But our lions should be at exactly 100% happiness now. The happier animals are, the more likely they are to breed. And just like that, we have our starter area. Remember, you don't want to use lions on a franchise zoo, but in Sandbox, go right ahead. But now let's make a little bit more complex of a lion enclosure, for intermediate builders. This was the most basic it can be, but if you feel like you've grown past this, and you think you can nail it down, let's move on. We'll still keep this one relatively simple. This will be for your average builders, and we're going to talk about unique viewing and heat maps. The main gimmick of this enclosure is going to be that it's not just going to be a simple glass barrier that you can see the lions from. Instead, we're going to go to the terrain tool and use the subtract button with these large squares. You can subtract a variety of different shapes, from spheres to cylinders to pyramids to triangles, but we're going to keep it simple with these squares for now. The first thing that we're going to do is make a little U-shape out of these squares. It'll look pixelated for now, but we'll come back and smooth it out later. This is going to be the ideal area where you can see the lions from in this exhibit. It's not going to have a giant fence. Remember how we said it had to be about 9 feet tall in the last exhibit? That's going to go out the window, since they can't traverse this pit. If they can't traverse the pit, it doesn't matter how big the fence is, because they won't be able to get to it in the first place. For now, we're just going to use the Flatten the Foundation tool and smooth out the edges a little bit. You don't necessarily have to do that, but it looks a little nicer if you do. For now, we're simply going to repeat all the steps we used in the beginner tutorial. For example, we're going to make our non-climbable barrier, we're going to make our fence, we're going to have our gate that the keepers can access, and we're going to mess around at the height. Sit back and enjoy!
And we're back, and the lions seem to be happy in their new enclosure already. But the very first thing you should always do if you have an enclosure that has an iffy fence that they might be able to get out of is make sure that they can't. For this, you're going to want to go onto your heat maps, click traversable area, and pick which animal you're choosing to see where it can traverse. If you saw right here, there were some red areas where the lion could have escaped from, so we're going to have to change that. In order to do that, we'll just make the fence bigger in that one specific area. Should be an easy fix in theory, but you never know, sometimes this can be a little bit tricky. So now, go back to it, and it looks like the lions can still escape, so maybe it just didn't update in time because it's the exact same area and this fence is definitely tall enough. If you think that it could be an error or even a glitch, try again. And you see, now the lions can't escape. If there's no red on the barrier, even if they can go down in that pit which we didn't intend them to be able to go in, they cannot escape this barrier no matter what happens, especially since this is brick, an extremely strong material. Now that we got that done and the lions can't escape, we'll do the exact same thing we did in the first part and add their hard shelter, enrichment, and plant life. This is all the same throughout every time you ever build an exhibit. The lions are going to need the exact same amount of enrichment. Now the tricky part is mixing up where it is and making sure it looks nice. This exhibit looks a fair bit nicer than our last one that we made, and I think the lions would agree. If you have happy animals, you will be awarded. Check out that notification in the top left. The lions are mating, and they're going to expect offspring soon. Usually it takes about a year for most animals to have the baby once they mate, but now we'll have a baby lion cub on the way since we did all of this hard work. Two lion exhibits down, one to go. The next one's going to be much more advanced. Just because this build is by far the most advanced tutorial in this video doesn't necessarily mean the past two are invalid. In fact, they're really important because as you can see, this build started with the exact same piece that the other two did, the gate so the staff can get in. This isn't necessarily going to be a building tutorial on this game, but we are going to be using not traditional barriers. This is why it's an advanced building tutorial, since we're going to be using blueprints from the workshop. I did not make this, nor do I know who did. I downloaded this before I even started YouTube, in fact. But go to the workshop and find any barrier that you think looks nice. There's hundreds of different options there from people. We'll worry about making our own some other time, because that is more fun. But this isn't a building tutorial, it's a habitat construction tutorial. So find a barrier that you like, and don't worry that it's not connected right to the gate quite yet, and then duplicate this as many times as you need to, using the advanced movement menu. Once you're happy with your first viewing area, we're going to work on a custom hard shelter. And for this, just choose some thick glass, normal glass, or one-way glass. Any matters. Make it about as big as you want. Spoiler alert, this is going to turn into a cave, so it's going to have to be rather tall, and it's going to be where the animals, in this case lions again, are going to be sleeping. So it has to be fairly sizable. Once you're happy with where your viewing of the cave is going to go, then pick some rocks out that match the area in which your habitat's going to be in. For example, this area is going to have a more arid feel since the lions are from Africa, so we're going to use the savanna rocks, which if you filter lions, this is the one that they like, even though I don't think rocks quite matter what an animal needs. You could use arctic rocks in here and the lions would like it all the same. I'm going to make a completely separate tutorial on how to place foliage, which includes rocks in this game, so if this is a little bit confusing for you so far, don't worry. But for now, just try to use as many rocks as you can, as many different shapes as you can, and if you want a quick tip, make sure random rotation is on, and then just make a circle. Once your cave is completely done, now we need to worry about filling in the other areas of the habitat. Well, we'll talk about the null barrier later, as that's a really complicated part of this game. But for now, we need to get where the null barrier can go. We need to map out the back walls and front walls of this habitat. To do this, go over to any rock formation that you've made. If you've made one in a previous exhibit, you don't have to make a new one, you can just use that one. But duplicate it, and then just keep rotating it at different angles. This will make it look like it's a completely different rock. Make sure you mess up the height too occasionally. But then just copy and paste this build all throughout the exhibit, and it'll make a convincing backdrop that your lions also won't be able to climb over since it's so tall. If you made the cave a little bit smaller, you might not be able to do this, 
But if you make a big rock formation from scratch, you can use that one numerous times and just copy and paste it. Again, just because there's no actual fence in here doesn't mean it's not possible to put animals in. We'll talk about how later. That'll be towards the end. Now that we have our fence constructed out of these rocks, let's do something about this terrain. It's really flat. Lions might like some height, maybe some low ground to their exhibit. Whatever you think a lion would enjoy, go for it. If it's a different animal, say we were working with a cougar, also known as a mountain lion, mountains in their name. You know they're going to want different areas of elevation in their exhibit. If an animal needs water, this is where you can add the water just by using the push feature and adding water in afterwards. Mess around with the terrain options. Flatten the terrain to get plateaus. You can use the roughen up feature to make things a little bit more rugged and arid. You can use the smooth feature to make things more easily traversable. The terrain is your canvas in this game. Do whatever you want with it as long as your animals are happy. This is also the stage in the build where you can start to pre-plan for your animals. We know what lions like, we just made two exhibits for them, so add in some plants for them before they get here. If you've never played this game before, this might be the most complicated part of the video. This is the null barrier, and it's easily the reason this game is the most fun. Pretty much what the null barrier is, is an invisible fence that your animals can't cross, but it counts as a real fence in the game's eye. So we can connect it to the barriers that we've already had. And by barriers we already had, I mean the glass barrier and the barrier that allows the keepers to get in. Even though it came from the workshop, the pre-built one does not count as a barrier, so you have to have the null barrier running through it. After you do that, connect the null barrier to the other side, and it acts like a pre-built fence. Thus, our rocks are now a legitimate thing, and we can move the lions into the exhibit. That was about the briefest explanation I can possibly give on null barriers. I'm likely going to make a completely different tutorial on them alone, because they really are the most complicated parts of the game. But like in the intermediate exhibit, the first thing you should do is go to your lions and make sure that they can traverse everywhere, and it looks like they could, including inside their little cave. If you made the roof a little bit too low, the problem is they wouldn't be able to go in there and still have zero hard shelter. Now we're going to do some terrain, and we're actually going to make it make sense this time. Add in your rock around the cave. That just makes sense, doesn't it? Add in some soil on heavily trafficked areas. That'll make it a little bit more realistic. Not everything's just grass. Add in some rock where there's rocks. Add in some soil where there's trees and the pond. Don't make everything grass. Mix it up. Try to make it as realistic as possible, while also pertaining to the lion's needs. The lion's needs come first and foremost. Otherwise, they're not going to be as happy and not bring as much guests to the zoo, which will result in no money, and then you can't do anything in this game. So you have to have the animals happy, but at the same time, keep their needs realistic. This is the part in the building process where you have by far the most freedom. Add groups of plants that are in different areas than you normally would. Add the enrichment items in areas that'll draw the lions closest to the guest. Make them eat in private, and then have a different area to eat close to the fence. Do whatever you want. If you could go to any zoo in the world, how would you want their lion exhibit to be? Make the zoo of your dreams. That's the entire point of this game. Add in some shade, add in some varying plants. Remember, this is the African savanna. There's not just one species of tree. Copy and paste things to add larger grass piles. Do whatever you want. This is the most fun part of the game by far. Add things around rocks, add things close to the water. Try to make it as realistic as humanly possible. That's going to do it for this first episode of Keeper Training. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope everyone who watched could learn something, whether you have an hour into the game, whether you haven't played it yet, or you're on your thousandth hour. Kingpin out for now. See you in the next Keeper Training.